Have you ever tried adding a top margin to an element in order to add space between it and whatever comes above it on the website? Except adding the margin creates this white space above the unicorn image. The weird thing is, is that both the hero section and the top nav section above it have the purple background color set. So why isn't the background color extending all the way between the two sections? The reason this white space is happening is due to a phenomenon called margin collapse. Now, if you watched my other video on this weird white space appearing under an image, that's happening for a whole nother weird reason. So check that out if you've ever experienced that yourself. But back to our current problem. What is margin collapse? Margin collapse happens when the top and or bottom margins of elements sometimes merge into or collapse into one another. Let's say you have two elements, a headline and a paragraph under it. The headline has a bottom margin of 40 pixels, and the paragraph has a top margin of 20 pixels. You might think that there should be 60 pixels of space between them if you add the margins together. But what ends up happening is that the two margins collapse into each other, so that the final space between them is 40 pixels, the size of the largest margin. Way back when, this was originally intended as a feature to avoid having a double margin and adding too much space between text elements. Another strange behavior related to margin collapse is if the first child in a parent element has a top margin. What happens is that the top margin of the child element will actually collapse and push outside the parent element. This will cause issues if you've set a background color on the parent because the space created by the child's top margin extends outside the parent. So it often ends up defaulting to whatever background color you have on your body tag. In order to prevent margins from collapsing, we have to explicitly add styles to prevent it from happening. In our current situation, we need to create a new block format and context on the parent of the unicorn image. This will stop that top margin from collapsing through the parent and instead force it back within the bounds of the parent element. Now, if you're wondering what a block formatting context is, I'm right there with you. After a lot of reading on Mozilla Developer Network, the CSS Working Group specs, and the World Wide Web Consortium, I ended up with almost more questions than I had answers to. But what I finally landed on is that it's related to how elements that are display block relate to one another on the page and how they relate to their parent element. Before, block format and context were important because you could use them to control elements that had floats. But since we don't really use floats for layout anymore, we really only think about block format and context as a way to prevent margin collapse from happening. So let's focus on that part instead of falling down the rabbit hole of CSS specs. So to stop margin collapse, you need to create a new block format and context on the parent of the element whose margin is collapsing. In our case, the margin is on the hero image and its parent element is the hero wrapper div. So there are multiple styles that we can add here in order to create a new block format and context. The most modern and direct way is to set display flow root on the parent. This will push that top margin of the unicorn back inside the parent block, making that weird white space disappear. Now there are some other styles that you can set on the parent, which will create a new block format and context as kind of a side effect. And you may have heard of this or even done it yourself without realizing it. So one thing that you can do is set a border of one pixel and you can make it transparent or set it to the same color as a background color so that it's not noticeable. Or setting a padding of one pixel will do the same thing. You can also make the parent a grid or flex container by setting display grid or display flex. But to be honest, I consider these style rules to be kind of hacky because you really should only add them if you need to actually have a border or a padding or create a flex or grid container. You shouldn't add these styles just because you want to get rid of margin collapse. I'm just mentioning them because you may have heard of them before as fixes. Again, I think the best fix to keep that top margin from collapsing is to add display flow root on the parent. But I also want to offer what I think is the best solution for our current specific situation. So let's take a look at the design again. We're trying to add space between the top of the unicorn and the top edge of its parent. And while you can use margin to add the space, it runs into the issue as we've seen of collapsing margins and then you having to figure out what's going on and fixing it. But you can avoid this whole confusion by not using margin to add this space, but instead to use padding. 
we're not trying to add space between two sibling elements. We're really just trying to pad out the inside of that parent so that its children aren't right up against the sides. So while I will use margin to add space between elements that are on the same level, for example, between the unicorn and then the headline text below it, to add space inside a parent element between its outer edges and its children, I think that padding is a much better way of doing so. Now I know I said earlier in the video that you shouldn't add padding just to get rid of margin collapse, but in this case we're using padding to add space, which is the whole purpose of padding, so I think it's okay. So instead of a top margin on the hero image, let's uncheck it to get rid of that. And then on the parent, let's add padding block to the parent to add space inside on the top and bottom sides. And there we go. Now we have that space getting added between the parent and the unicorn, but it's getting added inside the parent and not creating that weird white space. So I hope that this little tip can help you. I know that things like this make CSS seem extremely confusing and difficult to learn, which is why I wanted to make this video to explain it. Anyway, let me know down in the comments if you've ever experienced weird issues caused by margin collapse or any other CSS quirks that drive you up the wall. In addition, I'm currently working on a course called Responsive Design for Beginners, where you'll learn to build a website from a design from scratch using HTML and SCSS. If you want to learn more, I have a link down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.